if the Israeli government listens to the Biden administration, it will destroy itself. It will commit suicide. And as for the left-wing parties and the left-wing media in Israel, they're worse than ours, believe it or not. And they're contributing to undermining the ability of the Israeli state to defend itself. It's all about Iran. It's all about nukes. For about four days running, the Biden administration has been in a propaganda campaign, really a character assassinating Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, smearing the state of Israel, smearing their democratically elected government, and undermining them. Uh, it has attacked their judicial reforms over there that we've talked about in the past. Uh, their Supreme Court in Israel is nothing like exists in anywhere on the free world. Why? Because it's a Politburo. Because you have basically 15 lawyers in black robes who have uh, a say if they want and the final say in everything and anything that goes on in society. That's not the government that was set up when Israel was founded. It's not a democratic or republican government. It's not a constitutional government. It is a tyranny. It is a judicial oligarchy. And it all is of the hard left, as you can imagine, more and more towards the Marxist hard left. And in the state of Israel, you have the opposition parties, much like the Democrat Party here, that has gone to the streets and mosques and organized protests, backed by the media. Some of it's been very violent. It's even seeped into the military there and into the various universities and colleges. Uh, it's quite a mess. And the radical left, like the radical left in America, they want power. Uh, they do not believe in uh, sharing power. They don't believe in comedy, C-O-M-I-T-Y, with their political opponents. They seek to crush them. And the man they hate the most is, remarkably, the Churchill of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Just as Churchill was hated for most of his life and career, as was uh, Margaret Thatcher, as was Ronald Reagan, quite frankly. And this is what great leaders have to bear, great statesmen have to bear. But more to the point today, Joe Biden and his administration, which is filled with these Obama anti-Semites at the State Department, National Security Council, White House, much as Franklin Roosevelt's State Department, White House, and the equivalent of the National Security Council were filled with anti-Semites, even though they had some Jews around them, uh, is extremely hostile to the state of Israel. Joe Biden says there needs to be a two-state solution. In my opinion, for Israel, certainly now, that would be the final solution. Two-state solution with whom? The Palestinian terrorists? You know, Donald Trump tried that for a little bit, and he gave up on it. He said it's impossible. They don't want peace. They want war. They want terrorism. And they want to push Israel into the sea. And it's not going to happen. And so he took a different tact. He said, no, none of this two-state solution stuff. Let's work on peace. And they worked on peace. And they got five peace agreements between Arab Muslim nations that people thought were, was an unimaginable achievement uh, called the Abraham Accords. And you could see them building with other countries and so forth, even potentially with Saudi Arabia and Israel, and the Biden administration has undermined that completely. It's destroyed it. That process is gone. Now we have Palestinian attacks on Jews. Then we have Talib viciously attacking the Jewish state, calling it apartheid, and, and uh, because her parents come out of... Uh, Palestinian territories, and she is a Marxist, Jew-hating, Israel-hating Democrat. But what do you make of the Biden administration? Are they any different? What does this really come down to? It comes down to Iran. The Biden administration has been selling out the United States to Iran for two years. When Biden came into office, Iran had 5% uh, nuclear material that is, material capable for a nuclear weapon. Today, it's 83%. Now, of course, they blame Trump, which is what they always do, and which what failures and frauds always do in this, in this country. But under Trump, the Iranian regime was teetering. He choked it off economically. He enforced sanctions against that country. He enforced them against Europe, not to do any business, particularly with oil in Iran. And it was working. People rose up in Iran. The vast majority of the people in Iran don't want this government. They're not fundamentalists. Uh, and uh, that, that government, in my humble opinion, was teetering. It was right on the edge. 
and they were saved by Joe Biden. Now, why is this? Because Joe Biden has concluded that Iran's going to get a nuclear weapon. We're not going to stop them from getting a nuclear weapon. It just has to be managed. It's a regional part of the world, not an international terrorist organization, a terrorist state. We have to manage it the way we have to manage North Korea, the way we have to manage these things, which is outrageous. You have regimes that are going to have the ability to hit Los Angeles and Washington and New York and Chicago and every place in between and around with nuclear warheads. We won't be able to stop them, certainly not stop them all. These are, these are genocidal regimes, and they tell us what they want to do. Why do we ignore them? Why do we ignore regimes like China that tell us what they're going to do? Like Americans and others in the past ignored what Tojo, uh, Tojo was saying in Japan, or Mussolini was saying in Italy, or Hitler was saying in Germany. Why do we ignore them today? Human experience should tell us, pay attention. They're not sending smoke signals. They're speaking flat out about their hate for America and what they plan to do about it. And so we're going to stand by and allow it to happen. But Netanyahu says, no, this is our neighborhood. I cannot allow Iran, which already is undermining us with Hezbollah and Hamas and other uh, of their militia, I would argue, their terrorist organizations. They have 150,000 missiles aimed at Tel Aviv and other parts of our country, Jerusalem all over the country. We're a tiny country. We don't have the geography to run from this. We have to stand and fight. And so as they are obviously, in my humble opinion, preparing for war with Iran, since Iran is preparing for war with them, they cannot let that tripwire nuclear uh, weaponry uh, take place. That's why Biden is undermining them, because Biden does not want Israel to stop the Iranians. And he's made it abundantly clear. And he's undermining them every day. And he's undermining their government. That is a duly elected Democrat government. Duly elected. He's interfering with it. And he's purposely interfering with it. He says that the cabinet there, the coalition that Likud and, and Netanyahu put together in order to run the government, is the most extreme and radical that's ever existed. Does he even use those words to talk about Iran or Syria or China? Does he? Maybe the problem is that the Israelis haven't paid him off the way the communist Chinese have and, and other governments have. And I'm serious about that. But all that put aside, you're talking about a government in Israel that is competent, that's democratic, that has a significant military, that provides intelligence to us about all the things that are going on all over the world. Their technology is second to none. They share their military intelligence with us. They share their military development techniques with us. I mean, so Joe Biden runs to Thomas Friedman in the New York Times, the Holocaust-denying New York Times, the anti-Israel New York Times, the Hamas-Hezbollah-supporting New York Times. They go to Thomas Friedman, who, in my opinion, is a self-hating Jew, and he's demonstrated that for the longest time, article after article after article over the last 20 years, condemning the Israelis when they're run by a conservative party, when the people of Israel elect a conservative party or a conservative coalition, Thomas Friedman goes on a warpath. Why? Because Thomas Friedman is a secularist. Thomas Friedman is a radical Democrat. Thomas Friedman has never supported the state of Israel. And you can go back and read a perfect article on this in commentary, and I have posted it on my own uh, social sites, but you can go on the internet and find it. So. They're leaking today, yesterday, as I speak to their friends in the media, Thomas Friedman among them, where he's now trashing for the hundredth time Benjamin Netanyahu and that government. And in terms of the Netanyahu uh, prime ministership and the governments he's in and the coalitions he's built over the course of over a decade, for sure, Joe Biden always says it's the most extreme right wing government Israel's ever had. It was Joe Biden who made outlandish statements to Menachem Begin when he was prime minister and he was testifying in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And I will paraphrase. When Joe Biden threatened the prime minister of Israel, Menachem Begin, with cutting off military aid, one senator, so he can't do it, but with pushing that agenda, unless Israel starts to really 
uh, you know, toe the line that Biden and the Democrats insist on. Menachem Begin said in so many words, you know, you're not talking to a Jew who is going to talk, who's going to get in front of you on bended knee. Our people have been in existence for over 3,500 years. We face the Babylonians, the Persians, the Romans. We survived the Holocaust. We built our own country with no help from the United States. That is when they started, you know, to fight for their territory, for their indigenous lands in the 1940s against the British and the Palestinians and others and Arab countries. He said, we didn't get any help from anybody. And he said, and if you think that your threat when it comes to supporting us financially is going to change who we are and what we do, you're badly mistaken. That's the same buffoon who's in the Oval Office today. Now, I want you to compare Trump's treatment of Israel with Biden's. I want you to see Trump's outcomes in the Middle East, peace breaking out everywhere and Iran contained or being contained with what Biden's doing. And I want you to understand, and it's in this book right here, American, the, the Democrat Party hates America. I almost said American Marxism, but the Democrat Party hates America. And you will find that Joe Biden, who is desperate not only to have a legacy as great as Franklin Roosevelt, as the Democrats say, but even greater, you will find a long history of the Democrat Party hating the Jews, as you will find a long history of the Democrat Party hating blacks, as you will find now a long history of the Democrat Party uh, using racist tactics against whites, whites, blacks, Jews, and so forth, because the Democrat Party thrives on this. It needs it. It hates America. And what you will find that the Democrat Party icon, Franklin Roosevelt, said some of the most horrific things about Jews. It's in the book. It's not exclusively, it's just a little piece of the book. You will also find that at the height of the Holocaust that the FDR administration refused to let Jews into the country. Some trickled in, but they didn't even come close to meeting their quota. Their quota that was in immigration law. It was undermined. The number of people who died as a result of that is just incredible. Once Congress found out about it, they were furious. And this is the same FDR who worked with the media, urged the media. The New York Times, owned by a Jewish family, a German Jewish family at the time, urged them to tamp it down on the Holocaust, and they did. Most of the information coming out about the Holocaust was squelched by the Democrat administration, the Democrat State Department, the Democrat president, and the Democrat-run New York Times, for which there have been numerous books written, including mine, on freedom of the press. These are the same people coalescing together. The Democrat Party with Biden, the New York Times with Friedman, their editorial page and so forth, who do not want the Israelis to protect themselves. And if the Israeli government listens to the Biden administration, it will destroy itself. It will commit suicide. And as for the left-wing parties and the left-wing media in Israel, they're worse than ours, believe it or not. And they're contributing to undermining the ability of the Israeli state to defend itself. It's all about Iran. It's all about nukes. And Biden is prepared to allow the Iranians, effectively to help the Iranians, secure their nuclear weapons, which will change the face of the map forever. And so uh, rather than working very closely with the Israelis, Biden's undermining them. For all this and much more, sign up for Levin TV.